at the beginning of the smartphone revolution, it felt like this amazing product category completely changed the way we live, the way we communicate. And lately, it feels like after a slew of more and more similar products and more and more uninspiring products, that somehow the smartphone revolution has ended. At nothing, we don't believe so. That's why a bunch of us, industry veterans from different companies, have come together to see what can be done if we dare to pursue a different path, try something new. But like, how do we end up here? I think it's because everybody's too smart. What do I mean by that? There's so much data in the world. When you make a product, you can look at consumer data, competitor data, the tech roadmaps for your supply chain, and you can hire these really smart analysts to crunch the data and design you products that look like they're going to do well on paper. But we wanted to take a different approach. Instead of just relying on cold, hard data, we also wanted to lean into our instincts, our gut feeling, our intuition when making products. It's a bit more risky because it's kind of hard to tell whether it's going to work on paper or not. But at the end of the day, I think th there's a few principles that are really important to us. First of all, you know, are we making a product that we ourselves, as consumers, would even be interested in? If we saw our own product in the store, would we want to pick it up? Would we want to buy it? Would we want to try it? I think the second thing is, am I proud to share this product with my friends and family? Because when you're thinking about your loved ones and you're making a product for them, you're going to go the extra mile. You're going to do the extra all-nighter just to make the product a little bit better. So I think these two simple principles are what really guided us when we were developing the Phone One. Is it going to work? I don't know. Today, I'm really excited to see whether our instincts were correct. And we're not alone here. It's pretty amazing that we have almost 10,000 people who invest in our company. Not institutions, but regular people who chose to believe in a company who had only made a pair of headphones and with some vague ideas of what the future could be like. Why do we do this? Why do we have so many regular investors investing in our company? Well, I believe you know, starting a company today is not the same as starting a company 40 years ago. Something called the internet came in between and got invented. I think what the internet really enables is that, first of all, people from all corners of the world can suddenly have access to all the information. So we want to use the internet, and we want to leverage that to really connect all the most creative, the smartest people all over the world to build this company together with us. Last month, we leaked or we unveiled the design of the Phone One ourselves. Why? Because these days it's really hard to keep control of all the leaks, so we thought we might as well do it ourselves. This way at least we can control what kind of images are going out. But the results really blew our mind. The internet is, there's so much buzz online. We're really grateful for, for all that positivity. Or following the design reveal, we engraved the first 100 phones from 1 to 100 and auctioned them out on StockX. The first phone went for over $3,000. And in total, we raised over $100,000. Isn't that amazing? We're putting this money into a community managed fund. And I'm really looking forward to see what our community chooses to do with the money. All right, it's kind of noisy here. So let's go somewhere else, and I'll dive into the details of the phone one. This looks like a pretty good place to watch some videos with parrots. Modern smartphone releases have become quite boring. It's usually about specs and features. For us, with the Phone One, we wanted to bring something fresh to the market. We started off with a modern smartphone as a canvas to build upon, but then we really did something interesting on the back. We call it the Glyph interface. What does it do? It looks really cool, but what's the function behind it? There's a couple of things. First of all, we've uh, perfectly synced the glyph lights with our ringtones. Let me show you. That's a Morse code. Do you know what it is for? Our intention is for you to set different ringtones 
and different corresponding glyph patterns for different people. We will remember those and if you're in a meeting or in, at a dinner and you don't want to always be on your phone, you can flip your phone over, it will turn all your ringtones to silent and the glyph combinations will tell you who's trying to call you. So it's like a visual dialer or a visual ringtone almost. Another feature we have here is that all the glyphs are next to the functional areas of the phone. So this one is next to the charging port. As you're charging your phone, this becomes like a progress bar to show how much you've charged. The one here in the middle is next to the wireless charging coil, so when you're charging or reverse charging something, this will light up to indicate that it's being, uh, being in use. The one up here in the upper right corner, it points to the front-facing camera on the front, and there's also one around the dual camera setup here. This is the start, and we're building more features on top of the Glyph interface, and we look forward to work with our community to see where we can go with this. Something else that's really important for us is how it feels in the hand, like the experience of the product, right? Because we're using our smartphone for hours and hours a day. We wanted the experience to be premium. The front and back are Gorilla Glass 5, and the bezels are made up of 100% uh, recycled aluminum. So nowhere where you touch the phone do you have plastic. For us, sustainability has been important ever since the beginning. But it's not something that you, know, you should talk a lot about. For us, it's more about taking the actions and stating the facts. So what have we actually done on the product, right? Apart from the mid-frame that's 100% recycled aluminum, uh, more than 50% of the plastics used in the phone one are bioplastics or recycled plastics. And 100% of the tin used for soldering is also recycled. We're the only ones, as far as we know, in this industry that's doing this. The first reaction I had to the phone one, when I first held it in my hand was, wow, this is really light. And when I've been showing this to friends, that's also their first reaction, because in the past uh, year or so, I've been using the iPhone, and the iPhone is really heavy because it comes with a steel frame, whereas the phone one comes with an aluminum frame. So that's the main difference. Another really core part of the experience for a smartphone is the OS. I don't really get why some Android brands would really put a heavy skin on top of Android. Uh, it slows everything down, and I like the Android design. I think there's a lot of good default Android apps, so let's not replace them with our own. Instead, let's focus our time and effort on things that, like incremental value that we can add to users. Our vision is a world with, without barriers between people and technology, and where you can use your smartphone as a hub for your entire digital life. So for us, What's important is that we build connectivity between Nothing OS and other products all around you. So it goes without saying that Nothing OS should work well with our own products. Actually, we only have one product on the market, which is the Ear One. So in the quick settings of Nothing OS, you're going to have uh, quick setting controls for your Ear One. You can uh, change the noise cancellation mode. You can connect it, disconnect it, et cetera. But we want our ecosystem to be more than just nothing products. So we're also building controls for third-party products. The first one we built is for Tesla. So if you're a Tesla owner, you can connect with your Tesla, turn on the lights, flash the lights to help you find it in the parking lot, or uh, turn on the AC before you enter the car so it's just at the right temperature when you need it. When it comes to software, our approach is that stability and quality is way more important than building a ton of features because the smartphone is such an essential product. It needs to work all the time. And maybe you're in an emergency and it just has to work, right? It cannot be a product that ever fails. It's also a product we ship to a ton of consumers. It's a mass market product. So for us on the software side, stability, quality, and reliability is way more important than having a ton of flashy features. So that's why when you look at our engineering team and you look at our resources, we place much more resource on testing, quality assurance, bug fixing, than uh, new feature development. In fact, um, last time I checked, we had more than 500 engineers on Jira just closing tickets and, and fixing bugs. Um, so that's our approach to software. In the past couple of months, a lot of the team have become quite interested in NFTs. So we also built a fun little uh, NFT widget on the home screen of your phone so you can display your NFT collection, uh, quickly view floor prices, and more. Another super important feature are the cameras. Smartphone cameras are one of the most used features um, on the smartphone. 
And the phone one is actually quite controversial, believe it or not. It's only got two cameras. You might have seen that a lot of modern, modern smartphones have three cameras or four cameras. But actually, the amount of cameras is not what makes the photo quality good. In fact, a lot of these brands, they have maybe one good camera, and they put three kind of cheap cameras um, just to make you believe it's an advanced four camera system. But in reality, like after you buy the product and you start using the other three cameras and you're not that satisfied with the, with the photo quality, I think that really erodes the trust. Maybe it's good for initial sales, but really erodes trust in the brand for the long run. So for us, we kept it simple, no bullshit. Two cameras, both are really solid, 50 megapixel sensors. The main camera is a Sony IMX766, used in a lot of flagship Android phones today. And we also added OIS and EIS for that additional stabilization, especially when it's dark outside. And then for the secondary sensor, we went with an ultra wide, so you can capture uh, more of the scene. It's the Samsung JN1, also a really good sensor, and it has a 114 degree field of view. In fact, instead of telling you all about the technology behind it, the AI and all that stuff, let's just show you, right? And you know, in a lot of these smartphone keynotes, um, these smartphone brands would hire professional photographers. They would pay them and they would fly to exotic locations and then they would use Photoshop or other photo editing tools to make the images look really nice. But the problem is, never in a hundred years are you gonna be able to take those photos if you buy that product. So instead of doing that, we thought, hey, why don't we just give the phone to our community, our friends, have them take some photos in London. Let's upload the photos so you can download them. They're unedited, you can zoom in, and you get a real sense of the images that you're gonna be able to take with our product. Apart from photos, the modern smartphone is able to take really good videos. So the phone one lets you capture 4K videos. We also built this uh, fun little thing on the back where when you're recording a video, there's a red LED light that's blinking. Pretty cool, huh? By the way, what do you think about the quality of this keynote so far? In fact, it's been taken on the phone one. For a smartphone, a display is also super key. I mean, you spend hours and hours every day on your smartphone. I think the AMOLED panel that we're using on the phone one is actually one of the best on the market. It's got HDR 10 plus certification. It's got 10 bits of color. And that means a billion colors so that whenever you're viewing content, it's just so vivid and so lifelike. It's also got a 120 Hertz refresh rate and a 240 Hertz sampling rate. What does that mean? Uh, this coupled with the software tuning that we've done means that when you're scrolling through apps, social media feeds, etc., it's all buttery smooth. It's a really pleasant experience. We also did something quite controversial on the screen. We used a flexible OLED display to create a flat design. How does that work? Well, there's this OCD part of us where we wanted the four sides of the phone, so the chin, the forehead, the two bezels to be exactly the same uh, width. And usually on Android phones, the the chin is a bit bigger than the other parts because on OLED displays, there's these connector ribbons that connects the screen to the motherboard that take up the additional space. So by opting for a flexible OLED, we were able to bend it over to the back, the, the chin part, it's on the back and hidden. And that's how we accomplished the symmetrical bezels. But the problem is this costs almost double, like a flexible OLED display costs almost double that of a regular OLED display. And again, this is, a decision that we can't possibly justify with data. Like, if we opt for this display and pay almost double for the screen, are we gonna get X amount of better commercial performance on the phone? Don't know. But at the end of the day, we need to create products that we're really proud of, that we like to use ourselves, and also are proud to share with our friends and family. And that's just what we did with the display on the phone one. Let's talk about performance. Mobile processors have improved a lot over the past couple of years. So with the phone one, we didn't want to go for the latest and greatest on paper. Instead, we wanted to choose a really reliable and solid processor. It comes with a Snapdragon 778G Plus. Using the efficient TSMC 6 nanometer process, uh, it balances battery life, reliability, and performance. And on performance, I'm actually playing Diablo Immortal quite often these days, and 
even on the highest graphic settings, it doesn't lag. In terms of battery, what's important is that it can comfortably last more than a day. So the phone one comes with a 4,500 milliampere battery. Um, it's got 33 watts of wire charging. It takes around one hour to fully charge. Um, it's got 15 watts of wireless charging and five watts of reverse wireless charging. So that's about it. Let's go get some fresh air. So that's the Nothing Phone 1. It's a really big step forward for us. It's got this unique lift interface on the back, but more importantly, it's just a really well-balanced smartphone with everything from the build quality to the performance to the cameras. Oh, and it also comes in black. Prices start at $399, and the first time you're gonna be able to try it and buy it for yourself is on the 16th of July at our kiosk in Covent Garden. General release is on the 21st of July, where you're gonna be able to buy it on nothing.tech, as well as across all our partners. We've arrived at our office now. Today we're actually doing a little event where we've invited our friends and community to celebrate the launch of the Phone One together with us. Do you wanna come? After some hours, then I was laying in the bed. I came back. You will see things which are transformed. It's a different view, a different experience of our existence. It's uh, humid and hot as well, not just noisy. It is. We said phone one is coming this summer. We fulfilled both promises. Well, Carl, I well, don't want to be the one uh, starting off by asking a rudimentary question, but I absolutely must. Mm -hmm. Day's finally here. How are you feeling? You know, it feels so unreal. One and a half years ago, this was all just uh, like words yeah. and ideas. And one and a half years later, it's, it's getting so real. It's... It's finally launching. It's, it's a very emotional day for me. I'm, I'm pretty sure and I'm really glad that yeah. you're keeping it together. We have a lot of people <laughs> here who are waiting to speak to you. But, you know, I want to recap and throw back to one of the conversations that you and I were having about a week ago yeah. where you said that building a smartphone is super complicated and we were getting a little candid about the journey so far. And one thing really stuck out for me is when you said that it takes a village. Yeah, it really does. It's such a complicated product. So we've been so lucky that we had such great talent from all over the industry join us on this mission together. But do you know who the real unsung hero is? They're the family members. Yeah. The Nothing team has been working so hard and the family members have been so supportive and understanding. Well, thanks for acknowledging them and just a huge shout. After some hours, then I was laying in the bed. I came back. You will see things which are transformed. It's a different view, a different experience of our existence. <laughs> 